I'm not afraid of I just don't want to be there when it happens. That's a quote from Woody Allen. And my question, why do we feel afraid? Is it because I fear the image that I see when I hear the word? Or is it because I fear the end, the ending of everything? Let's dive into that. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Jordan, 23 years old, did over $4 million in revenue, hired over 50 people, and I make videos on YouTube since 2012. I share this because you have been conditioned to care about numbers and appearance. But it is effectiveness over appearance that works. So what is effective? To not feel afraid of death? Or to never think about death again? Or maybe to feel good when you hear death? I would say none of these things. To find out what is most effective, we have to understand some other things first. But before we do, big disclaimer. I'm a conditioned individual just like you. I'm not better than you, I'm not smarter than you. I have not understood all the intricacies of my mind yet. I may have made some realizations that are absolutely true. But never believe me, never believe anyone for that sake, as beliefs will always remain beliefs. And the serious person just wants to know for himself or herself, not to just believe for the rest of his or her life. So what is true about Well, that we are not dying right now. We live, and that it is thought that creates the fear of death, right? That thought is the difference between reality, right here, and what's going to happen in the future. Brings me to a quote that I found from Isaac Asimov. Life is pleasant, is peaceful. It's the transition that is troublesome. And your thoughts are always old. Do you see this? Because the moment you recognize your thought, it is already in the past, right? So instead of being afraid of death, aren't we afraid of the thoughts about death? Afraid of this inner voice that we listen to without knowing, and even if we know, without giving it permission. Are we afraid of the thoughts we have about death? Because if you die exactly right now, you would have no fear, right? You would just be gone. But if you knew it would take another minute, then you probably start thinking about the future and then may fear arise. So these very thoughts about the future create fear. So the way to not feel this fear is to have a mind that lives completely in line with the reality right now. But how is this possible? That is my question. Because my mind is constantly occupied with something. And when it is not, it is asking me to be occupied with something like, hey, put some music on, right? This is also probably why there is always music everywhere you go, every restaurant, every gym, and even in the cars people drive. Always music. But why is this? Why is the mind always trying to be occupied with something instead of just simply being? Maybe we are afraid of the emptiness that is given. Maybe I'm afraid to really look at my fears. And are there actually such a thing as multiple fears? Or is there only one fear? What I'm trying to say is, am I afraid of death and afraid of heights? Or am I just afraid? Not afraid of anything, just fear. If so, how can we observe ourselves completely in this very moment? Why do you want this, you may ask? Because if we can do this, we can start to see the truth behind our fear, right? Because being in this moment, there is no thought. And as I mentioned earlier, it is thoughts that create this fear. So when there are no thoughts, we may finally start to look at this fear instead of trying to escape from it. It is thought that makes us think about the future or our memories, which are either old or have never happened. But above anything, they are not true. They are not reality. Do you see this? If you don't, then maybe this example will help. Is it true that you are in pain right now? Or is it thought that makes you think back to a moment in the past where you did feel pain, which makes you almost re-experience that pain right now. I hope that explained my point. So back to my question, can you watch fear with an empty mind, like Bruce Lee used to say? So not a mind that projects images here, inside here, of past funerals you may have been to. Not a mind that tells you the imaginary pain you might feel when you are going to Not a single thought, almost like being a new human being, observing every, everything as new, like if you saw yourself for the first time. Can we do this? We can, but it requires silence. Not outside, but in here. I'm not talking about ambulance, cars and people outside. It's really inside here. It's not easy because as you might know, without focus, your mind talks to you all day. And only when you start to become aware of this inner voice, you can start to get closer to pure observation. So without giving you a method, the first step is really to become aware, aware of all this talking of the mind. And when you do, you may start to see that you have separated yourself, that there is space between you and the fear of 
while the reality is that you are fear. I am this fear that I feel. That is the truth. What is not true is that I feel afraid and I must get rid of it. That's not reality. That's what you have been taught to think about. When you truly realize this, you, you start to see you can't get rid of fear because you are it. You are fear. How can you get rid of something you are? It will be a huge waste of energy to create this conflict. I say create because that is what happening. You create conflict between being this fear and the idea that you should not be fearful. But you do have control over this creation process by examining for yourself how your mind is creating this fear. So my question to you, will you examine this? That leads me to death itself. What is death? You're unserious if you believe me, you're serious if you ask yourself. Isn't it a complete ending of every memory you have and all the thoughts you held about the past and the future? An end to the memories about the good times, but also an end to all the worries of tomorrow's bills. Is this I would not speak the truth if I said I knew. But let's assume it is. That is the end of everything that is thought. If you could experience this ending while you live, would you do it? And with that I mean you did not have memories of the past. No memories whatsoever. Nor thoughts about the future. Maybe you could see it like you woke up every day. Where, this, where it's an actual reset button. And you, you woke up without memories and thoughts about the future. Would you want this? That's my question. It brings me to a quote that I found from Mark Twain. The fear of death follows from the fear of life. A man who lives fully is prepared to die at any moment. That you are not attached to your laptop, phone, car, house, all this stuff. Even not attached to your family, to your children, to your partner, to your dog, cat. The state of mind where there is no fear or happiness. For all of these things are created by thought. I'm asking if we can end this. To live in, in the same house with the people that you call your family, my children. But instead seeing the reality that you're just living with other humans in a house that one day will disappear. And for myself, since my grandma uh, two weeks ago, to be at the funeral of my family and not have a single emotion, not a single emotion when I'm on their funeral because I am no longer attached. That's my question. To die while I live, to to everything that is in here so I can finally live, to have a fresh mind even though we live maybe in an old body, to see clearly for the rest of our life, to end everything that is not true, to end everything that is thought. But how? Doesn't this require an extreme amount of focus, of effort? That's maybe the question you have. I have a question for you if that's something you may think about. Do you care about your life? I mean, if your car breaks out in fire, does it take you focus or effort to run out of your car? I won't answer that for you. I think we both know the answer. Because you care about your continuation of your existence. And in this very same way, you can care about looking at yourself. Do you understand what I mean with that? For instance, you feel bored, all right? You might feel bored, but that you not look at yourself and say, I should not feel bored. I have to become successful, all this stuff. But to look at you, what you are, that you are bored without feeling good or bad about it. Just observing it without maybe remembering a video with the title, boredom is good for you. And without remembering your father telling you, you cannot be bored if you want to be successful. Really looking at it because you care about the examination of this boredom. How do you create this caring, you may ask? Well, you don't create it. It's already within you. It's all about finding out what you really want in life. So if you want to continue the way you live right now, then that is the truth. That's not bad. I won't judge you for it. You should not judge yourself for that. For that will only create more pain. It's the truth. But if you desire to not continue to waste your time because you see it that way, you do not want to continue your days looking like mostly filled with negative emotions and from time to time experience some positive emotions. But most of the time you're either irritated, pressured, you might, might feel stressed for whatever reason. Just look at your own life to see how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. If you desire to change that, then that is the truth. And if you really desire that, then you start to look at these emotions. So you may find the truth behind them. And when you do, they will starve. That's the power of the truth. That's what I want, to live in a state of no memory, no memory at all, or better said, to 
into everything you know, including your family. I know that may hit you, listen it to me, to really see the truth of this thing that we call family. It's something that are very, very few people are willing to do. And I'm not recommending you should, all right? When you die, there is no more thought, right? No more illusions. And when there are no illusions, there is only reality. So when you do not know anything any longer, you have mentally, not physically, mentally. So you can finally start living, seeing life from a new perspective. Not once, every day, every moment because there is no memory. Do you see this? So the question remains, am I willing to let go of everything that I know so I can finally start living? Talk soon. Only the serious person may check the show notes. And here's my poem about the essence of it all. Caught in thoughts, we live in the fear of of loss, of what's not here. But in this instance, there's no dread, no past, no future, just life right now. Outside our head, the art of being, beauty I find, an open heart, a quiet mind, in that stillness, peace I find, to live with death, no longer blind.